Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my bias collection, of course, what else could it be? And today I would like to talk about a theorem with a slightly strange name, the famous uh, Hilbert Satz 90. Satz 90. So Satz is just German for theorem, so it's just saying Hilbert Theorem 90. Uh, number 90 is it. I'm going to explain where the name comes from from my first slide and then we'll uh, jump into the theorem itself. So it's by now roughly 125 years old, kind of a classic in algebraic number theory. Okay, so the point is um, that Hilbert in, well, here's a number, like let's say 125 years ago, it depends when you watch this video anyway. <laughs> uh, let's say 125 years ago, wrote this, uh, a very famous paper summary, whatever, summary about algebraic number theory, the Theorie der algebraischen Zahlenkörper, or in English, the theory of algebraic number fields. Okay? But it turns out that this one was like, like really good. Essentially, Wilhelm Hilbert was supposed to, was asked to summarize the state of the arts. But Hilbert did that in, in such a good way that uh, kind of reinventing the field, if you want, enriching and organizing it, that it was really influential. And people eventually just called it the, the Zahlbericht. Essentially, it just means a report on numbers. Yeah. If you would nowadays write a paper called Report on Numbers, probably most people will ignore you. Um, but at this point, and it was just known as a Zahlbericht. It's kind of, a, you can find it online. It's, if you just Google it, you will find it. Uh, it's kind of not really readable. Um, anyway, it's German. So if you can read German, you can try to read it. But the point is, it just, Hilbert just does whatever. Um, summarize and reinvent algebraic number theory. And during this, Hilbert has a very specific style that always goes that's one, that's two, that's three, that's three. So theorem one, theorem two, theorem three, theorem four, all the way down to, I actually haven't checked, but 90 appears. And this 90th one uh, is the one we're going to talk about. And so Hilbert Satz 90 is really just the 90th theorem in uh, Hilbert's Saalbericht here. And it turns out it was one of the most important kind of, kind of uh, the report was really important. Um, and also this theorem was kind of an interesting one. It generalizes Pythagorean triples, as we will see now. I hope the name make, make, makes now sense. It's kind of a weird name, as I said, but it's essentially just the 90th on a certain list. And all the others are not as exciting, so this one is kind of a famous one. Hilbert's Satz 90. Um, okay, and what is it all about? So let's think, what is it all about? So it's something in algebraic number theory. And I will have a formal statement later, but I, I feel like it's, but Satz 90 is always a little bit, if you just read it, it looks kind of a little bit strange and you don't really know what it's supposed to do. But it actually has quite a few applications. And the first one that comes to my mind is the Pythagorean, Pythagorean triple. So that's really just numbers of the form a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is where the number name comes from. That's just it. And if you want to find it, whatever, uh, the only example I probably know is the three, four, and five which hopefully works out. Um, I guess here's another example, 1850, oh, sorry, eight, 18, eight, then eight, 15, and 17 could also work out uh, if you want to try that. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, kind of finding those numbers is kind of, so really integers, right? Finding those integers is like uh, the, the, the task people were studying for a long, long time. Um, yeah. and. Really, you can just reformulate it in a very, not very smart way. It's just the direct reformulation. Instead of looking at kind of integers with a squared plus b squared plus c squared uh, equals c squared, you can look at rational points, essentially just dividing by c by c if you want, on the unit circle, which really just means now x squared plus y squared equals one. All right, so you just get rid of the c squared, put it on the other side, and then x is something like a divided by C, and uh, Y is something like B divided by C. And it will just do that, fine. And you could look for those rational solutions, the equivalent problem. And it turns out, and this is not quite obvious, but obvious, uh, it's not quite obvious, but obviously well known. Let me try again. This is really not obvious, but it is well known, and it was well known in Hilbert's time, that you can actually write down all solutions, and they're all of this form. Okay, fine, that's what it is. There are some integers involved, m and n, and all solutions are of this form, 
And essentially, Hilbert Zitz 90 will um, kind of explain where they come from because they're yeah, okay, fine. They have different solutions and well, they have different approaches to explain where they come from. But Hilbert Theorem 90, Hilbert Zitz 90 will just generalize uh, this solution or these solutions uh, in one go. For example, it also proves the following, which is kind of looks like really different from Pythagorean triples. Um, so a functional equation is just some equation function that satisfies, and then there's always the question, uh, is there any solution? How unique are solutions? And all, all of this fun stuff. So for example, uh, if you have a functional equation of this form, x, x plus y equals f of x times f of y, it should remind you of an exponential thingy. And yeah, so possible solutions are of exponential form, right? Or for example, you have something in the other way around, turning a multiplication into an addition, um, that should give you a logarithmic solution. So here, exponential solution, logarithmic solution, and you can have various forms of functional equation. And if you have a more sophisticated one, it's really absolutely not clear whether you will find a solution or uh, whether you can list solutions or whatever. And it's usually quite difficult, but kind of functional equations are kind of everywhere, right? The, the logarithmic exponential or something more sophisticated. So you have something more sophisticated, which will be captured by uh, Hilbert, this is Hilbert Satz 90, Hilbert theorem 90. So if you have a functional equation of this form, where my theta is a root of unity, x and then theta x and then blah, 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 whatever, equals one, which to me looks like um, I have no idea what kind of function would satisfy that strange thing. Uh, and it looks to me like really crazy. I would just give up immediately, probably. But Hilbert says, OK, that's actually very easy. And you can nail down all solutions if you want, if you restrict, you'll see in a second, if you restrict a little bit what you accept as a solution. But essentially, all solutions are of the form. Um, a rational function divided by itself just shifted by the root of unity. And again, the same question arises. This is kind of a fun solution to this problem. And the question kind of arises, where on earth do the solution come from? And this is where Hilbert's famous Satz Neunzig comes into the game. So let's move into it. So here's a precise formulation, um, or the one not quite taken by Hilbert, but very close to the one by Hilbert. There are more modern versions of it, but anyway, let's ignore that. If you, if you like something like group cohomology, for example, it's something of like vanishing of certain group cohomology. Anyway, so we're talking about field extensions. We have a field, well, here, rational numbers, and you have a field extension, let's say rational numbers, and it joins the square root of minus one, in case uh, you don't remember what i is, the square root of minus one, there you go. You join it, it's a field extension. And okay, and the automorphisms of this field extension, they form a, a group, which is called the Galois group. And let's say you have a generator of that Galois group of order of a certain order. Uh, uh, for example, in this case, complex conjugation is an automorphism uh, that would work here. And this has order two in this case. So I should, should write any constituent here. Okay. Fine. And let's say you have an element in your field of relative norm one. And this really just means you have alpha, you have sigma of alpha, uh, blah, 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 all the way to sigma to the n minus one. Alpha equals one. That's just the product that comes out. And then Hilbert theorem 90 says, OK, if that's the case, and then you can express alpha rationally. You have a closed expression for alpha, and it's always of the form something divided by apply sigma to something. Right? So if you look at this example here, so um, we take rational functions uh, over rational functions in x to the n, so rational function in x and rational function in x to the n. The automorphism is just putting a root of unity here. Then this is exactly um, the solution here to Hilbert's. Uh, so sorry, to, to this functional equation type problem. And if you do this with a complex conjugation, you will get, by just writing it out, you will just get uh, those guys here. For example, this one here turns up to be, well, x times x bar will be something like n plus n squared. So this is where the solution comes from. Just comes from that you can always express elements in those field extensions as something divided by apply automorphism something. And this is rational expression as a rational number of you. And then, of course, then plenty of other examples. So I think these examples are quite different in nature. So here you take uh, rational numbers and the uh, 
uh, well, the field extension of degree two, and here you take the complex numbers and kind of funny complex numbers with the rational function in the complex numbers and the field extension of uh, degree n in this case. And you can just consider whatever, it works away. Kind of that is Hilbert theorem 90. I would it makes sense. So we have field extension, you take a generator, and then uh, you have something that satisfies our functional equation, and then you can always express it in a nice form. It's kind of a bit weird. Kind of a bit surprising, actually. And it does more. Here's another example of what Hilbert theorem 90 uh, can do. So you can look at an ellipse, for example, here, uh, there's a five here, instead of uh, the circle. So this was just a circle. This was just, oh, there you go, x squared plus y squared equals one. And now you can look at an ellipse by putting, let's say, a five in front of y squared. And you can play the same game with this type of field extension. Just use Hilbert that's noisy, and you will find those generalized Pythagorean triples, which are the rational solutions on an ellipse. And again, just covered by uh, one theorem. So that's kind of kind of an interesting theorem. It kind of generalizes Pythagorean triples, if you like. Anyway, I hope you like enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.